All right, we're about to enter room 203 for a tour of the zoo here at Roosevelt High School. I'm Mr. Zagre, also known as Mr. Z. Hi. And I'll be taking you through a tour of the animals that we have here in the classroom. Our first one here is an alligator gar. And if you watch that show River Monsters, they did a show on this guy once and um, I guess they can grow to be really, really big, over 10 feet long. and So a real monster can be. And this guy has been around for a long time. He belonged to a teacher that taught here and retired a number of years ago, about, um, I guess it was about 10 years ago. And so he's really old, but he seems to be doing fine. And he eats goldfish and he lives right there. Next we have a little painted turtle named Squirt because he came to us as a baby and he's still fairly small but nothing like he was when he first came to us. And he eats turtle food that we have around and sometimes Bill Jack dog food and goldfish and whatever. Mostly carnivorous. So that's a painted turtle. We have a number of turtles and tortoises here and uh, I just want to point out the difference between turtles and tortoises. Turtles are more adapted for life in the water where tortoises are more adapted for life on land. This is a, a saltwater aquarium or a marine aquarium. Marine refers to salt water and there's nothing in it right now uh, except for some algae and that's because everything that was in it died <clears throat> and I think I'm either going to tear it down or I'm going to uh, replace the water uh, because we do need salt water later on when we study uh, in some invertebrates. Uh, we'll be getting some living animals in, some living invertebrates in, and we'll need a place to keep them. And so this salt water aquarium is the whole, you know, that's the whole reason I have this salt water aquarium around, is to be able to put salt water invertebrates in it when we study them. Here we have a red-eared red slider. And, of course, that's another turtle. I'm trying to get get a good view here. We've got some reflection off the glass. But he's a red-eared slider. He's been with us for a long time. Um, just another turtle. You can see one of those turtle characteristics if you look at his feet. He's got webbed feet, big wide paddles to help them swim through the water. Turtles also are more flat than tortoises are to streamline them in the water, make them more hydrodynamic, that technical term for it. Then here we've got um, a couple corn snakes, two relatively small corn snakes. And they uh, show different colorations. Uh, he's, this is, uh, we've named them uh, Lily and Snipe. Snape, I'm sorry, Snape from Harry Potter, you know. Lily and Snape. This is Lily, isn't she pretty? And she has the typical um, corn snake color. Corn snakes are also known as red rat snakes. So you, as you can see, She's kind of reddish in color. And then Snape is sticking his head out there from underneath this rock. Snape is more of a brown, gray-brown color, but he's got the same pattern. It's just that it's not red, red and tan like uh, Lily is. And they eat mice so far. When they get bigger, they can probably handle small rats. And at this point, we keep both mice and rats only in the freezer. We've got frozen mice and rats to feed our, our snakes. We don't keep lives, live mice and rats anymore, however we have in the past. <clears throat> and in here we've got two common Colombian boa constrictors. And the last time I opened this cage and reached in here was to feed them, and they were really hungry, and I got bitten. So I uh, urge you not to open the cage and reach in, you know, without asking me first. Same with the corn snakes, same with any of the snakes, um, actually all the animals, because you never know. Even some of the fish can bite you, like I've been bitten by the gar before. 
Um, so, like I said, common Colombian boa constrictors. I'm not exactly sure how long they are. We haven't measured them. But I would imagine they're at least five feet, four to five feet. And they can grow to be about 12 feet long at the very longest. Uh, the longest one I've ever had, and I've had others before, is uh, nine foot. A little over nine feet. And then another one that was a little over seven feet. But they're very powerful constrictors. You know, they, they're the ones that grab onto and squeeze their prey. But these are handleable usually, <clears throat> so you don't have to be afraid of them. And you'll have the opportunity to hold them at some point. One of the first activities we'll be doing is in activities with the animals, so you'll be able to get a, a closer look at them. Sorry, this is taking a minute. I just want to make sure the cage is secure. So continuing on with snakes, we've got another one here that is a um, king snake but it's an albino king snake and it's a California king snake it's an albino California king snake and we call her bisquick just kind of because of her color it reminded somebody of bisquick I guess you know the baking stuff back when we got her she's got a yellow stripe down her back so she's not totally white but she doesn't have the normal coloration that these guys would have and she's very aggressive so anytime that you open up a cage you think she's going to eat because she does eat in her cage the other snakes we feed um, we take out of their cage to feed them so that they don't get used to being fed in their cage it's more dangerous that way uh, it's more dangerous to feed them in their cage because then every time you open their cage they think they're going to eat and they go after your hand thinking that it's a mouse or a rat they're not trying to eat you they're just thinking that your hand's a mouse or a rat. Under the king snake, we've got an African lungfish. Now, we only keep two fish here. We keep three kinds of fish. We keep goldfish to feed some of the animals. Um, but this is the only fish that we keep to show. And the reason we keep this African lungfish is because it's the missing link between fish and amphibians. It's kind of halfway between being a fish and being an amphibian. It's called a lungfish because it can breathe air. It'll come up every now and then and take a gulp of air from the top or from the surface of the water. And you can, well, he's about to do it right now, or maybe not. But you can see the uh, fins that it has, and they are fins, but they're different than other fish fins where they're not really flat and paddle-like. Um, they're kind of more like limbs and they help the fish to crawl along on the bottom of its habitat. So that's an African lungfish. And he too is very aggressive. And we feed him by hand, so he thinks that anybody holding anything above his tank here is going to be feeding him. There he took a gulp of air just then. But, um, so you don't want to stick your fingers in the water is what I'm getting at, because he will bite you. Look at that. That's a combination of taking gulps of air, but also thinking he's, he might be being fed here. But when he bites you, you know it. He's got teeth, and it feels like you've been hit with a hammer when he bites you. Hopefully he'll, he'll never bite you. But I've been bitten by everything that bites anyway. This is a blue-tongued skink. And you can see when she sticks out her tongue that it's blue, hence the name, Blue Tongue Skink. And you can see she's a pretty fairly good sized lizard. You know, if, you, if I pick her up here, you can kind of see her size in comparison to my hand. She's not dangerous at all. She's never tried to bite anybody as far as I know. She may have tried to bite somebody when I wasn't looking, but I really don't think she's ever tried to bite anyone. And she's been a real good uh, resident here in the classroom. She's been real healthy all the time. And she eats a combination of fruits and vegetables and Bill Jack dog food. These little nuggets here are dried up pieces or drying up pieces of Bill Jack dog food that were left in her cage for her to eat yesterday. And we call her Blue. Her name is Blue, which makes sense because she's a blue tongued skink. 
we're going to come over to the other side of the room here and here we've got a box turtle and tur uh, box turtles are turtles but they kind of violate that um, generality that I gave you a little while ago about the difference between turtles and tortoises turtles are more adapted to life near in near or in the water and tortoises are adapted more to life out of the water well this box turtle is kind of adapted more for a life out of the water and away from the water so you'll see some of the characteristics in box turtles that you normally see in tortoises so box turtles are kind of the exception to the rule the other difference between turtles and tortoises in terms of their shell is that turtles can completely close their shell and that's what this box turtle can do so because the box turtle can completely close its shell tortoises can't do that um, so that's another difference between turtles and tortoises that tells us that this is a turtle and not a tortoise even though it kind of lives the life of a tortoise out of the water then in this cage we've got a common green iguana uh, from South America, Central and South America, and they're even living up in Florida now. Not because they were native to Florida though, but because they've been introduced. People get them as pets and then they release them into their backyard and or they get away or whatever. And so now there's a whole population living in Florida that really shouldn't be there. But that's the whole idea of introdu introduced species and invasive species because the population of iguanas in Florida are competing now with the other species that are supposed to live in Florida or that lived in Florida before they were introduced. Um, but you can see it's, a, again, a pretty good sized lizard. She's kind of, uh, she gets spooked easy. In other words, she uh, doesn't like to be held and touched and so forth. But she does like to come out and climb around. So we let her out whenever we're feeding her. We let her out climb around. She's never bitten anybody either. We used to have an iguana that did bite people. He bit me, bit right through my thumbnail once. But this iguana has been friendly ever since she's come to us. She seems to be more afraid of us than we are of her, so you know that situation. So that's our green iguana. And every now and then you'll hear some uh, digging going on. And it could be this animal, which is a leopard tortoise. And I'm going to go back in this other door. We've got a couple doors along the cage here so we can get far further back to see him. His name is Honu, which is Hawaiian for tortoise. Come on, Honu. There he is. Hi, Honu. So he is a tortoise. That means he's adapted for life away from the water. They can live in almost desert conditions, and a lot of tortoises do live in the desert. Um, this leopard tortoise is from Africa and uh, can't close its shell all the way. All they can do, actually, is they don't move their shell at all. That, what they have, have to do is pull in, pull in their arms to act like a door to close off their shell. And their arms can be really um, heavily armored with scales so that they do a good job of closing up the shell and protecting the tortoise when it pulls itself in to hide from any predator that might want to eat them. And that's been, that's really the, the reason for success for the whole group uh, of turtles and tortoises. Their shell has allowed them to survive. They're older than the dinosaurs. They were around before the dinosaurs.